Welcome to the Mark Steiner Show, Real in the World News. I'm Mark Steiner, and it's great to have you all with us. We've all heard about how the super wealthy preserve their wealth and avoid paying taxes by putting their wealth in offshore assets. And more recently, how the United States and Western allies are going after offshore assets of Russian oligarchs because of the war in Ukraine. But what if I told you that you don't have to look that far to find out how governments protect trillions in wealth, how tied together the wealthy and the money managers are to government, and how they're not taxed legally for trillions of dollars right here in the United States. That individual states in our union are protecting that wealth. And that's a huge part of the reason why we have poverty in America, can't pay for infrastructure, health care, or education. Well, that's been a reality. It is a reality. And it's been investigated and brought to light by a study called Billionaire Enabler States, how U.S. states captured by the trust industry help the world's wealthy hide their fortunes. It was recently published by the Institute for Policy Studies in Washington, D.C. And the authors of that study join us today. Kalina Tom Have is a freelance journalist and researcher working with a program on inequality and the common good at the Institute for Policy Studies. Her work has appeared in the American Prospect, The Nation, The Progressive, and many more. And Chuck Collins, who has joined us before, he is the author of the book, The Wealth Hoarders, How Billionaires Pay Millions to Hide Trillions. He's also the director of the Program on Inequality and the Common Good at the Institute for Policy Studies, where he co-edits inequality.org. And they're joining us today. So welcome, Kalina and Chuck. Great to have you with us. And so let's just start by defining some terms here and why they're so important. And, and Kalina, it, it, you know, when you all write about corporate trust assets and unregulated trusts, what they mean and why they're in so important conversation and why we know so little about them. Sure. So I think we can start out just talking about what a trust is, because a lot of people don't really understand what exactly a trust is. And so so a trust is essentially something that a grantor, the trust creator, sets up for the benefit of beneficiaries. So maybe like um, their son or their or their grandchildren. And the person who, who sets that up for them is the trustee. And so in that case, Typically, like someone in the trust industry, uh, a wealth management person. And so that's essentially what a trust is. And so they were created so that so that a person could ensure that trust assets or their assets were kept safe until the beneficiary was able to take control of them. The problem is that trusts have been distorted and manipulated since uh, since their origin and used by super wealthy people to avoid taxation, to avoid their creditors, to pass billions of dollars on to their descendants without without having to pay any tax to the federal government. So, uh, so, so your book is not telling us how we can do that. So the question is, how, how, how do they do that, Chuck? I mean, what, I mean, I think we don't understand the amount of money we're talking about here. And how individual states are actually controlled at some aspects in this regard by the trust industry itself. I mean, we don't understand the, the depth of this. Uh, well, first, I just thank you for having this conversation because the topic of trusts, I think it's important to say right at the beginning, is purposely complex. That the tax lawyers, the people who design these trusts, want you to give up, throw your hands up and go talk about something else. Um, (laughs) The complexity is intentional. The complexity is intentional. So, you know, and and one of the things that is going on here is they've taken this ownership arrangement that Kalena described, and they're, they're, the the trust attorneys and are manipulating and, and morphing it into something else. And there are certain states in the United States that we call trust havens, or they're sort of like secrecy states that are particularly trying to attract this business by changing their laws to make it possible for people to hide money for centuries. Um, So that's, that's, that's part of why it's important that, that, you know, you, you've picked up on why this is important. This is one of the tools in the wealth hiding toolbox, probably one of the most important ones that, uh, the ultra wealthy are deploying, and their enablers, their their financial managers, so are ta- using. Let's talk about what this means. I mean, when you when the, both of you were just speaking, I mean, when we're talking about trillions of dollars of money in this country that is not taxed, and there are certain states that become their tax havens 
And we all think of this, you know, when we think of this, we think of it as, oh, the wealthy have tax havens and they're in the Cayman Islands somewhere, but they're not in the United States. But no, they're in Wyoming. They're in Delaware. They're right around the corner. They're where we live. So let's talk about how can, how can that be? How can you make millions and billions and trillions of dollars and hide it so you don't pay taxes and America suffers for it? How does it even begin to happen? Kalina, do you want to jump in and start? And Chuck, please jump right in. Sure. I think, I think it's how a trust is structured, that states have changed their laws to allow sort of like an ownership limbo and, and secrecy of, of trust assets. So like if I wanted to put my billions and billions of dollars, which I clearly have, um, in trust in, in South Dakota, um, I would put that in the trust and I wouldn't own it anymore. It, w- it wouldn't be mine. And it doesn't belong to the trustee. But if a creditor was coming after me, I could say, I don't, I don't have those billions. I just have the $5 in my bank account. Sorry. And that's, <laughs> that's the law. It's, it's almost like the trust assets belong to the trust. Right. Chuck? K- Kalina said it. Well, I think that that phrase ownership limbo is part of what's going on here. You know, again, if we if we took the Steiner legacy here and put it into this trust, you could technically be both the person who put the money, you know, Mark, you could put a billion dollars into the trust. You could be the beneficiary. You could have me be the trustee, but I'm instructed to do whatever you want. But when it comes time to pay the taxes, you'll be like, I don't own that money. It's in a trust. Um, so that's one of the games, one of the shell games that the ultra wealthy pay play. And their wealth managers will say, hey, we're just helping our clients obey the law. But what what our report shows is that in certain states, the trust attorneys write the laws. They lobby these kind of citizen legislatures who don't understand this trust topic any better than you or I. And they say, sure, we'll do it. It's going to create jobs. It's going to bring money to South Dakota or Wyoming. And so they change their laws in a kind of race to like who will have the lowest standards or the lowest requirements. So if you this just, this might be simplistic, but let me just ask this question because I think that after talking to a couple of folks after I read your report, it actually came up. And I, I think that I just want to clarify something here. Um, that if, if I was a billionaire and I put my money in trust in South Dakota or in, in the, the state of DuPont, which is what I call Delaware, <laughs> or places like that, I put my money there. Um, does that mean that if you're wealthy, you just put your money there, it sits there, you don't have access to it, you can't use it, your kids can't use it. So what difference does it make? The, the money is sort of booked there and banked there, but it could be anywhere. And I think this is important. Even with off, so-called offshore finance, the money often comes into U.S. markets. The United States is a very attractive place globally for wealthy people to park their money and so it holds its value. So it could be in real estate or art or finance. Um, so that money is just, the trust is off investing in, in things. It's, it's just, uh, that's where the, they, they set up the, 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 the entity to hold it, but that money could be invested anywhere. Um, and that's one of the things we learned a year ago when the Pandora papers were published is the United States is now uh, a destination for all this billionaire wealth from around the world. It's coming here, it's going into trusts, and a lot of it's probably staying in the United States, particularly in luxury real estate and other assets that the wealthy like to buy and hold their wealth. So Kalina, that, that, all that, that in, in essence means that you can put the money in trusts, but you can still use it to increase your wealth. That's where I think people have a disconnect. It, it is increasing your wealth because the money and trust is always invested in something. So it's always growing. And that's why we say that that trust assets are going to grow virtually untaxed for generations because they are they are growing and earning. So in, in the study, when you look at these states, you talk about current trust assets. You talk about the current number of trust companies, tax inequality rank personal income tax, inheritance tax, rules against perpetuities. And what the, let's talk about what those terms mean. So when people look at this, they kind of understand what we're talking about here. 
Um, and again, I'll start with Chuck and, and just go back and forth. I mean, Kalina, um, I, that, that, so to understand what we're actually talking about here and how deep it is and why and, and how, how pervasive it is um, and how it creates, well, let's start with this, how it creates tax inequality. That to me, Kalina, is like one of the, the, the a huge issue. People are always complain about how much taxes we pay and don't get much for it. And how does this fit into all that? So I think that we can look at it at a national level and at a state level. So at a national level, these billionaires, no matter where they live, they can they can put their money in trust in um, in what we call trust haven states and virtually avoid taxation. And so and so they're avoiding their money being sent to uh, the federal coffers, right? So that's a very clear case of uh, um, expanding inequality and hurting the res- like hurting the residents of, of everyone in, in the U.S. But you can look at it on a on a state level too, and how it actually affects those state residents, because the trust industry isn't going to want to set up in a state that has like really high individual income taxes and capital gains taxes. And so the states that we profile, they have very regressive state tax structures, and so they don't have uh, generally, they don't have income taxes. Uh, instead, they rely a lot, particularly on sales taxes, which we know disproportionately are paid by right. Right. The, the poorest <clears throat> people. And so that reduced revenue that, that you get because because of the regressive tax structures, that's, that's the problem that the revenue is not going to public services or, um, or infrastructure. And so Many of the states that we profile, um, I think it's seven or seven or eight of the, the states that we profile are in the very bottom of, of state spending when you when you rank states by state spending because they just they just don't have they just don't have the money. And and and, and Chuck, and part of the reason they don't have the money is because of trusts. Is, and how does that fit in? Yeah, I think that trusts are one of the ways that which wealthy people uh, avoid taxes. ProPublica did a study where they, based on some, a huge leak that showed that of the hundred richest people in the United States, half of them use a particular type of trust called a grad and to avoid estate tax. So estate tax is like the inheritance tax. It's really our anti-dynasty tax. And the estate tax has become effectively voluntary for the ultra wealthy because they are just planning mostly using trusts, but other gimmicks as well to avoid it. So and we're talking probably hundreds of billions of potential revenue a year. We think there's six, you know, almost $6 trillion in trusts. Uh, we think that's the low end of the estimate because a lot of this is hidden and we don't know where it is. What do you mean it's so hidden? So it's really, th- the way to think about it, meaning it's, it's sequestered or hidden in these trusts, a lot of which don't have to, to report who their real owners or beneficiaries are. Um, and I should say, Mark, if you go to South Dakota, what's what do they got that, say, Massachusetts or New York doesn't have? Cows. Their secret sauce <laughs> is secrecy. Secrecy. Yeah. The, the, aside from Mount Rushmore. Yeah, or whatever. The, 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 their secret sauce is secrecy. We won't ever divulge who you are, who the real beneficiaries are. Uh, no tax. We're not going to tax your trust. We're not going to put any requirements on you financially. And longevity. Your trust will live forever. We're going to change the law so that the trust can exist for centuries. Um, and so it becomes attractive if you're thinking in a very dynastic, multi-generational way. What about the great-grandchildren? How do we make sure that they're still going to be billionaires? We're going to use this system of trusts and we're going to review in the process, we're going to uh, shift the tax off of the rich onto everyone else uh, in that process. So this is not necessarily in your report, but one of the things that struck me as I was reading it and, and listening to what you were saying now is how is it that most people in this country, most citizens of this country who work salaried or whatever they work and pay taxes don't know about this? I mean, we're not talking about like a, a couple of million or a couple of billion dollars. We're talking about trillions of dollars in this country that go untaxed, that are not paid by people who are U.S. citizens. 
because they're wealthy and hide them in these trusts. How can it be? I mean, and it's just not, and you just can't point your finger at Republicans, even most of these states are controlled by Republicans. It's not a Republican issue or a Democratic issue. It's both parties because they're both in it. So, A, how do you, why do you think we don't know about this? And let's talk a bit about what it means if we actually did something about this. So I, I think that a lot of a lot of it is tied into just the how obscure the world of elite wealth is and and the elites like um, people often talk about the top one percent, but this isn't the top one percent that we're talking about. This is like the top point zero one percent essentially <laughs> it's super super right. wealthy, um, not even millionaires, but but people who have like over thirty million dollars. Um, or billions, right? So, so multi multi millionaires and billionaires, pe- people that we just typically don't really know, and um, the world that, that they inhabit is just very different from um, from our everyday lives. And it's because of they they do business with this trust industry. Like it is the it is the trust industry behind all of this. Like when we say that a wealthy person is stashing money in South Dakota. They maybe don't know how to do that. All they know is that they're going to call up their accountant who has a lot of extremely wealthy clients and their accountant is going to figure it out for them. So I think a lot of it is just like, can you afford to pay millions of dollars to hide your billions of dollars? That's that's what's really here is like it's it's just it's a different world. That's why people don't really know what's going on. I think Kalina said it perfectly. I mean, even the billionaires themselves probably don't know how these trusts work, <laughs> uh, but it's the hard, it's the hired help that figure it out. I mean, uh, if the United States is kind of host to almost five point six six trillion dollars worth of assets hidden in this country, and as I said in the very beginning, we think of these things as being offshore assets, but they're here. Um, and laws were passed that tried to deal with offshore assets, and we can talk a bit about that. But how does that relate to how you deal with it here? What can be done to address that? I mean, you know, as an example, you know, I, I, I drive around, we're broadcasting from Baltimore. Maryland happens to be one of the states that is not one of the worst in the country when it comes to this stuff, uh, according to your report. But I drive around and I see development that needs to happen jobs that need to have happen and poverty and crime in a city like Baltimore. It takes assets to make that happen and we have no access to them. So so I'd like you to talk just about, about A, how you think they get away with it, what, what do they do politically to get away with this, and B, what we can do about it. How do we change this dynamic? Yeah, you know, I think it's true that some, that this is really a national issue, even though uh, the trust havens kind of undermine the system for every state. So it's hard in Maryland to, to you know, tax the wealthy to pay for infrastructure, to pay just their fair share when they've moved that money across straight lines, state lines into these trusts. So in a way, the fix is going to have to be federal. These states aren't going to reform themselves. And so we basically say, look, first of all, trusts are secretive. Well, let's require that they be registered and that the beneficiaries be registered. Let's just outlaw trusts that only exist for tax dodging and to put wealth into that ownership limbo that Kalena described. Uh, And let's hire people at the IRS who know how these shell games work so they can follow the money and make sure the rich are paying their share. And as you implied, Mark, the the, the rest of the world is start of waking up and you, the European countries are putting more, requiring more disclosure and transparency. And the United States has become the weak link. And then within the United States, we have these trust havens that are kind of the weak link in the system. It's actually not that hard to fix it. It requires federal action to just amend national trust law, amend trust law to basically require transparency registration and hide, you know, to, you know, require reporting on what's already in these trusts. That would be the first, first step really. And, and clean. I mean, if we, if we actually address this issue, the trillions of dollars that are hidden away, 
where taxes are not being paid either for the state or to the federal government. I mean, it would it would set off, I would think, a huge battle in this country. I mean, I think the populace overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly would say, yes, tax this, because it's not fair we're paying, they're not. But it would set off a battle because clearly the power they have to create the laws in these states that allow them to hide their money is not something they're going to give up easily. So how, how do you address that, do you think? How do we begin to put our hands around that? That is a very good question. And one <laughs> that, that's kind of difficult to answer um, because I think that we we like to think about about solutions and and um, and not so much the, the political way to get there because the solutions seem so far away. But I think that I think that what it just will require is is more conversations like what we are having now because obviously there's more people um, you know who aren't super rich billionaires than there are super rich billionaires. And so if more people actually knew about this problem and knew how to talk about it, then then that would be a real positive change. Um, and as Chuck already said earlier, it's really difficult because this topic is so complicated. Like, I mean, when I talk about it, people's eyes kind of glaze over. But, <laughs> right, right. Then, no, I understand. Right, right. Yeah. Right, right. And then when you start talking about like the, the secrecy, um, you know, it gets it gets a little more interesting. And that that's kind of what we need to hammer home, like like you've been, the the fact that there's trillions hidden, um, and sometimes hidden in plain sight. Like like um some states do publish um how much trust wealth is is in their borders. Some states don't publish it at all and will not give it to reporters emailing them. Um and as as Chuck said, like some of it is hidden, like it's unregulated. We don't know how much there is, but we have the 5.6 trillion number as a conservative estimate, and that's trust and estate assets. So we can't put a put a figure on on trust assets themselves. Um, we just know that it's increasing. Like the 5.6 trillion of trust and estate assets has increased by more than a trillion. That's an increase of more than a trillion in just the past year. And so the explosion of wealth that we're seeing, all of that is is going into not all of that, but a lot of that is going into trust. And it's we're seeing an explosion in in trust wealth as well. And and Chuck, it, it, adding on to that, I mean, what we're talking about here, the stuff that you two wrote about, um, is that we're talking about trillions of dollars that have not been taxed. So talk a bit about if we actually could get our hands around this and say this is not should not be legal, that the wealthy cannot hide trillions of dollars from 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 the, the United States to to help our country to do things we need from medic for medical care to infrastructure to whatever. What are we talking about here? If this was actually done in a way that tax people the way they should be taxed, what would it mean for the economy? What would it mean for what the federal government could do or state governments to do that they can't do now? Well, I think we start with the, the premise that the, the ultra wealthy are not paying their fair share of taxes. And if we actually, if they did, it would have for, you know, our, a lot of our local governments, city of Baltimore states, we're all living in what I would call kind of a phony austerity because we're being told there's no money. Oh, we have a right. national debt. We can't, we can't spend money on this. We have, you know, budget constraints. The reality is if the rich paid their fair share, probably taxes go down, can go down for the 99%. We wouldn't have to be carrying the tax responsibilities that, that, uh, that the ultra wealthy are avoiding. And we could make the kind of robust investments that would make our society just a much better, healthier, dynamic place to live. Um, and and I, I'm optimistic because, first of all, I think people are waking up to the harms of these systems, how these har- systems pl- allow the plundering of wealth from the global south in certain countries, and here in the United States, how it impoverishes some communities and enriches others. And here's another interesting thing that I, I think is hopeful. The system is cracking. The what? The, the wealth managers, some, the system is cracking because the people inside it are leaking all this data. 
Uh, and we are we're being approached by trust officers who spent their whole life, mm. you know, working to help the wealthy who are saying, I want to help rewrite the rules to shut the system down that I helped create. Um, so we're seeing defectors, whistleblowers, leaks of data. Um, so I'm optimistic that in the next couple of years, this picture that we're talking about will become clearer and clearer and that the appetite for reform will keep the pressure will keep building. I mean, even in those states where these tax havens exist, these trust havens exist, if the majority of people in those states understood that and what exactly was going on, how it affects their pocketbooks and their state and their children and education and health care, that could change the nature of, of the conversation in America. I mean, this is a huge, it's huge. It's not just like, oh, some rich people are hiding their money. They don't pay their fair share. We always knew that, but not to this extent and what they're actually doing. If that was understood how they're kind of breaking the trust that you have in America to create these trusts, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling that this actually exists here in these nine states and maybe growing. I was going to say, I think it is helpful to think of that the, there's a race to the bottom in, among these states, but not every state is in this chase. So what's interesting is states that actually have functioning democracy, small d democracy, don't let their trust industry, this tiny little group of of you know, at, trust attorneys and, and accountants capture their political system. They say, no, you, you don't get to write the rules. We're, we're a big government, we're a big state, and there's lots of people's interests. And it's these small states that get manipulated uh, where they're, we use the word capture. The trust industry has sort of captured them. Captain's they literally a good word. in South Dakota have a committee, committee that writes the laws, that rewrites the rules. Every year they say, what can we do to compete with these other states? Um, so, but I think even in those states, as you say, Mark, yeah, even in those states, Mark, people are saying, how come we're paying such high sales taxes and these rich people with their trusts are, are contributing nothing to our state revenue? That, what's broke? That's broken. Were you about to say something, Kalina? Oh, I was just adding on to, to what Chuck said about how there's a committee in South Dakota that, that writes the laws to make South Dakota the most competitive trust uh, industry state. And it's it's not just like a committee of lawyers put together by the bar. It's, it's <laughs> convened by the governor. But it's also not an official committee. So the um, so the meetings aren't recorded or, or made available to the public. So it's as if these nine states were actually holding the rest of the country hostage when it comes to the ability to invest in the future of this country because trusts and their lawyers and enablers are right, actually writing the laws to protect the wealthiest people on the planet. That's the picture. I couldn't say it any better. <laughs> well, th and this has really been an interesting conversation and I would look forward to kind of even more and, 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 and getting this out as a, as a way to popularize it for the world and, uh, and our nation to understand because if people really got a hold of this, I think that it would be uh, would be uh, revolutionary uh, in the sense of how people would want to see change because it's just uh, it's unbelievable. We have trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars going untaxed because they hide their wealth not in the Cayman Islands but in Delaware. I mean that's insane, and this is an, an amazing report. And I, and I want to encourage everybody that that I'm going to link to this report on our site. Um, and that was put out by the Institute for Policy Studies, the, rep the report how uh, a billionaire enabler states, how U.S. states captured by the trust industry help the world's wealthy hide their wealth. It'll be on our site, uh, and you can check, uh, read it, go through it, uh, and uh, please contact our guests, contact us, and we'll continue this conversation with people who want to stop this around the country and do something about it. I want to thank you both, Kalina Tom Have and Chuck Collins, uh, for, for this conversation and for the work you did here. I think that the work that you're doing at IPS is critically important to this country. Uh, and this is one of the most important pieces that you've come out with in a, in a while because it just really gets the heart of what we're facing. Thank you both so much for joining us today. And thank you both so much uh, for doing the work you do. Now, please let me know what you thought about what you heard today and what you'd like us to cover. Just write to me at mss at therealnews.com and I'll get right back to you. And if you have an extra minute, go to www.therealnews.com 
and support the real news. Become a monthly donor. Become part of the future with us. So these kind of programs can keep coming to you and America and the world. So for Cameron Grandino, Stephen Frank, Wayne Gladden, and Kelly Rivera, the crew here at the Real News, I'm Mark Steiner. Take care and stay involved.